video for how to do a multi-layer compression wrap system. We tend to use a three-layer wrap system. So I'm going to go ahead and just put my supplies out. Only touching the edges here. And then I'm going to take my cotton roll and stick it out on the field. And in this scenario, we're assuming that the dressing is already on the patient, which you'll get to see. And then the other two rolls can just go on the side of the field. And then you want to hang yourself some paper tape. I don't need one for the cotton layer, but I like to have three for the ace wrap layer, and I'll show you why. Okay, so now I'm all set up, and I'm going to go ahead and wrap my patient. Always do hand sanitizer before your hands go into a box of gloves. Keep all the gloves minimally contaminated there. And then now I now that I'm gloved, I'm gonna just touch this field or my patients, one or the other. Okay, so Nina, hi, welcome back. Hello. So uh, if it's okay with you, I'd still like to do another multi-layer compression wrap on you. Of course. Great, thank you. And the goal of the multi-layer compression wrap, again, is to get some compression to your leg to support your veins, and we're getting both low resting pressure and high resting pressure. We get the low resting pressure by building up multiple layers on the wall so that when your muscles move under the compression, it's a good calf pump mechanism. And then the second ace wrap layer is going to give the squeeze on the leg, which is the high resting pressure compression. So those uh, two mechanisms will help support your veins and eject your venous blood back to your organs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds good. Great. All right. So we're going to take the first cotton layer. The cotton layer, go ahead and rest your heel for now, just toes up. Whenever you wrap, you want to make sure someone is um, in either neutral or slight dorsiflexion. And this first cotton layer is just meant to pad the skin from all the other layers that are about to go on. You want to make sure that you go over the met heads both dorsally and um, plantarly. And I'm going to go ahead and scooch this down just there. And then, go ahead and lift. I'm going to make sure I catch the heel. And usually the tendons stick out and I will do a couple of pleats. And then tack them down. And then I'm going to come back and do another one over the Achilles. Another couple pleats. Extra padding there and tack that down. And then I'm going to rest on my hip here and take the cotton all the way up to the tibial tubercle or slightly higher because I'm going to end the wrap right at the tibial tubercle. Okay, you can rest your heel there. This is the second layer, which is the ace wrap layer. I like to bring the tape with me. And this is the real workhorse for the high resting pressure compression. So I'm going to make sure that it is smooth and without wrinkles. So I'm going to smooth a lot with my backhand. I'm going to make sure that I am coming down towards these met heads here. <clears throat> and actually, I think we could even go a little bit lower and really cover this way. So that was an angle change on my part. And then I'm going to smooth. So I don't need to go too tightly on the foot because of the anterior tib surfaces right here. So I don't need to wrap very tightly. I'm on my third turn here and I'm going to start to catch the heel. And you can, you can smooth this out. Now I'm past the heel and I'm at the malleoli. And go ahead and pull your toes up again. There you go. I'm going to get those wrinkles out. And that happens a lot, so make sure that you get keep your patient in neutral. So now that I'm here at the ankle, I start the figure eight pattern, and this is where I'm going to apply squeeze, because remember, the incompetent perforator valves mostly, and most of the other incompetent valves lie medially here. So now we're going to figure eight, where we go up and behind, down and behind, and now I'm putting some stretch on this, and this should start to feel snug. And now I am starting to ease up. I'm not pulling quite as tightly because I am trying to create an uphill gradient. I don't want to trap fluid in the leg by having a tourniquet at the top. So now I take two pieces of tape, get that anchored. And then because the ankle moves, I like to tape the heel. 
section here. All right, go ahead and rest, Nina. Thank you. And now we're going to do the Coban layer. This also builds the wall, and it has a lot of stretch, and it's the layer that people tend to overwrap or wrap too tightly. So the idea is to unwrap it, relax it, then roll it on the leg. So I'm going to go ahead again, starting down at the met heads, and I'm going to uh, take it off the roll and relax it, and I'm going to play with the angles because sometimes, there, that's better. And you don't want any windows. And now here, this is kind of hard to manage, so then I'm going to go ahead and pull on it, pleat it, and fold it over. Oh, you know what? Look what I found. Let's not have that. There. Now I'm going to do my pleat. Okay, rest. And now I, and th by the way, this layer is all spiral. Where this, uh, this, this uh, ace layer was spiral the foot, figure eight the leg. The coban layer here is just a spiral. This helps hold all these layers in place for several days at a time. Initially, we like to change the three press twice a week for the initial volume reduction because the wraps will start to slide and bunch. And if they really do settle down, then we can go to once a week. I'm gonna wrap all these layers in, and I have extra because her leg isn't very big or very long. So I'm gonna go ahead and tear here but you could use the rest of it. But this is what the finished product should look like. Nice, neat, flat, stuck to itself. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of my extra product, deglove, and sanitize my hands.